In this video, you'll learn the triangle sum conjecture, which says that, in any triangle, the sum of the measures of the interior angles in every triangle add up to 180 degrees. So that goes for every type of triangle, obtuse, acute, right, equiangular, scalene, or isosceles. One thing you know about triangles is that the three interior angles will always add up to 180. So let's start off by proving that. So if we look at this picture here, we have a triangle with angles A, B, and C. And we also have two parallel lines, one at the base of the triangle and one at the other end of the triangle. And we're going to use those two lines in the triangle to help us prove that no matter the triangle, the interior angles will always add up to 180. So the first thing that I can tell from looking at this picture is that we know that angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle A add up, oh I'm sorry, plus angle B <clears throat> add up to 180 degrees because by looking at the picture the two sides that are not touching the other two angles form a straight line and we know that straight angles are 180 degrees so we know that that's true because straight angles add up to 180 therefore angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle B add up to 180. Another thing we can tell from the picture is that angle 1 and angle A are congruent and if you look at the parallel lines, and imagine this line right here, extending it out so that it looks like a transversal, you'll see that angle A is equal to angle 1. So let me erase that real quick. I made a little mistake. Angle A is congruent to angle 1 because they are alternate interior angles. And likewise, if we look at this other side of the triangle and extend it out and look at it as a transversal, we'll see that angle 2 and angle C are also congruent because they are also alternate interior angles. So now if we go back to our first statement and take angle A and substitute it in for angle 1, which we can do because we know they're equal, and take angle C and substitute it in for angle 2, we'll get that angle A plus angle C plus angle B add up to 180 degrees, which is what we are trying to prove that the three interior angles, A, B, and C, of a triangle always add up to 180. So therefore, we proved the triangle sum conjecture. So now we know that in any triangle, if we know two of the angles, we could find the missing one by subtracting those two angles from 180. And the reason why this was a good example of deductive reasoning was because we started with a very general triangle. All right? The triangle pictured is obtuse, but every argument that I made would work for any type of triangle. And also it's deductive because I use facts like the alternate interior angle theorem and also the fact that straight angles add up to 180, or straight angles are equal to 180, <clears throat> to help me prove that. So two reasons why this was a good example of deductive reasoning. So now, let's try to apply this proof with a practice problem, if I can figure out how to get to the next slide. Next slide. And so let's try to find all the angle measures, all the lettered angle measures that are missing in this picture using what we know about triangles, that their interior angles add up to 180, and also that we know that linear pairs are supplementary and vertical angles are congruent. So first, if you look at this big triangle, there's a lot of triangles in this picture, but in this big triangle, we know that two of the angles are given. So one is 66 and one is 62. So to figure out angle C, all we have to do is take 180 and subtract 66 and subtract 62, and we'll get 52. So we can start off right here and say that angle C is 52 degrees. Then, if we look at this angle measure right here, 115, we know that this angle next to it is going to be 65 because it's a linear pair. In any of these types of problems where there's a lot of missing angles, but you're only supposed to find some of them, if you know a missing angle, even if it doesn't have a letter, find it anyway, because it might help you find another angle, which will lead you to help you find one of the lettered angles. So, if we continue with that strategy, we see that we have vertical angles right here, so this angle will have to be 65 degrees. And then, now we have a little triangle right here. So if we do 180 minus 56 minus 65, we get that this angle right here 
is 59 degrees. And that leads us to angle E, which we now know is 121 degrees because it's a linear pair at 59. So, so far we have E and C. So let's keep going. Let's keep finding angles that we know because of vertical angles and linear pairs. So we know that this angle right here is 59 degrees because it's a vertical angle with 59 degrees. And then if we do 180 minus 66 minus 59, we'll get that this angle right here is 55 degrees. And this vertical angle will also have to be 55 degrees. And we can't we don't have enough information to find A, but if we look at this 120, we know that this angle is going to be 60. So now we have two angles in this triangle. So we can find the third angle by doing 180 minus 60 minus 55. And we get that this angle is 65. And this vertical angle, 60, will help us find this vertical angle, angle B, which would be congruent. So angle B is 60. And then if this angle is 62 and we have a triangle right here, then this missing angle would have to be 58, which means that angle D has to be 58. So we got D was 58, B was 60, A was 65, and that was all of the lettered angle measures. So that's just one example of using the triangle sum conjecture to help you find missing angles. So let's go on to the next slide. And in this question, we are given the three angles as expressions, and we want to figure out what x is. So, there's nothing here to really set equal to each other, because, you know, although this could be an equilateral triangle, there's not enough information to assume that. But, since it's just a triangle in general, the only thing we can really assume is that all the sides, I'm sorry, all the angles add up to 180 degrees. So we could take these three angles, which one of them is represented as uh, 3x plus 2, the other one is 5x minus 1, and the other is 6x plus 11. Add them together and set them equal to 180. So now, it's just an algebra problem. So combine like terms. So we get 3x plus 5x is 8x, and then plus 6x is going to be 14x. And then, so we'll cross those out. And then 2 minus 1 is positive 1. And then plus 14 would be 12. I'm sorry, not, 1 plus 11 is 12, that's what I meant to say, equals 180, and then subtract 12 on both sides, so we get 14x is equal to 158, and that will come out to, alright, I made a very silly mistake, I said 180 minus 12 is 158, and clearly it's 168, which is why I got a weird answer. So if we just change this to 168 and then divide both sides by 14, we get that x is equal to 12. All right, so let's look at one more interesting thing about triangles. Actually, no, let's not. Let's look at one more example. So here, again, we're going to look for triangles and given angles and help us find missing angles and also look for linear pairs and vertical angles. So, angle 1 is going to be 60 degrees because 90 plus 30 and then subtract that from 180 will give you 60. And then angle 2 would have to be 130 because these are vertical angles, angle 2 and 130. And then angle 3 would have to be 20 degrees because 30 plus 130 add up to 160. And then these three angles, 30, angle 2, and angle 3 should add up to 180. So when you do 180 minus 160, you get that angle 3 is 20. And then, if you look at angle 7, well, that would have to be 70 degrees, because 20 plus 90 is 110. Subtract that from 180, and you get 70. And let's see, what else can we figure out? So let's go back to angle 4. Well, if we look, 130 and 20 and angle 4 should add up to 180 because they form a straight line right here. So if we do 180 minus 130 minus 20, that would give us 30. And also you could have just looked at this angle 30 right here and got that angle 4 was a vertical angle. So that helps. 
And what else do we know? Well, if we look at this angle 20 right here, that's a vertical angle with angle 6, so angle 6 would have to be 20. And then angle 6 plus angle 7 plus angle 8 should add up to 180. So angle 8 has to be 90 when we subtract 70 and 20 from 180. And then looking at angle 5, well, we know that one angle is 30, the other is 20. And if we subtract those two angles from 180, you get that angle 5 is 130. And last but not least, angle 9 has to be 50 because it forms a linear pair with 130. All right? Now, let's look at one last thing that have to do with triangles. And before we prove anything, we want to look at the anatomy of a triangle. So, um, we know that the three angles I'm about to mark off right now are called interior angles because they're in the interior of a triangle. Alright, now you pick one and we can pick one of these exterior angles and interior angles and that's called the adjacent interior angle. And then if we extend one of these sides out, the linear pair formed with that adjacent interior angle is going to be the exterior angle. So the adjacent interior angle is always next to the exterior angle that we're talking about. Then, the other two in interior angles are called remote interior angles because they're not adjacent to the exterior angle that we're talking about. Alright? So, the exterior angle conjecture says that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So, let's prove that. So, according to that conjecture, Angle, angles A and C, since they're the remote interior angles in this picture, should add up to be congruent to angle D. So, let's start with a proof. So, the first thing that we know is that angle A plus angle B plus angle C add up to 180 because of the triangle sum conjecture that we proved at the, mid at the beginning of this video. All right. <clears throat> we also know that angle B plus angle D equals 180 because they're a linear pair. Then, if we take these two sides and set them equal to each other because they both equal 180, we'll get that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to angle B plus angle D. And then, if we just subtract angle B from both sides, we're left with angle A plus angle C is equal to angle D. So, let's just use that very quickly in an example, and then that's the end of this video. So, if we look at this picture, we want to figure out angle A. Alright, there's a couple different ways you could do this, but the easiest way would be to identify, okay, 125 degrees is my remote, I'm sorry, is my exterior angle. And I know that's going to be equal to the sum of my remote interior angles. So I could set 125 equal to 90 plus angle A. And then if you just subtract 90 from both sides, we'll get that angle A has to equal 35 degrees. Alright, thank you for being patient and watching this video. I hope it was helpful and have a good one.